Welcome to this third Sunday after Easter. We are delighted that you are taking some time to join us as we gather together to offer our prayers, we hear, to hear Holy Scripture, and to come together to set aside this time for God. And as I said, we might not be gathered together in one place, but we are gathered together as a family here at St. John's, and we are delighted that we have this chance to be together and to pray together. Even if we are apart, we are still together in our prayers and in our thoughts. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. May his grace and peace be with you. One of the lovely things that Catherine did before she uh, finished her ministry here with us is that she has pre-recorded a number of kids' talks for us so that we will still have a chance for a couple more weeks anyway until the end of June to enjoy her, her guidance, her insights, and her storytelling. And so um, we will, uh, I invite Lisa to, to play that now, our kids' talk for this week. Hmm. Oh. Oh, I see. Hmm. Let me get a closer look. Hmm. Oh, yes, I see. Oh. I was just looking for everyone. Looking out for everyone trying to find out who is here and seeing what you're doing. Jesus told the story of the Good Shepherd as a way to let people know that God was taking care of them, looking out for them, finding out what they're doing, what's keeping and keeping them safe. I have a couple questions for you this morning. Have you ever seen a sheep or a shepherd? I bet you've seen a sheep. But um, I'm not sure maybe you've seen a shepherd. There are all kinds of shepherds all over the world. And the ones that you might recognize would be the ones from, say, a pageant story. But um, here's an example of a shepherd who lives in Scotland. There are a lot of sheep farmers in um, the United Kingdom and specifically in Scotland. And um, they are farmed for their wool and probably for their meat as well. So this is what an example of a shepherd would look like. I have another question for you. How does God take care of you? That's an interesting one to think about. I wonder if God takes care of you in ways that feel like your uh, caregivers, like your grown-ups, take care of you, or if it's something a little bit more subtle. Maybe God takes care of you by, you know, making sure that there's food on your table, making sure that farmers can make the food making sure that you have clothes to wear, making sure that, you know, there are people to make clothes and materials to put those clothes together. Maybe it, God takes care of you in the form of a friend, a friend who, you know, writes you notes or sends you messages or um, when we're allowed to can give you a big hug. And that leads me to my next question. What people does God put into your life to help take care of you. I would, like we just said, um, your grown-ups, the people that you live with, friends, teachers, ministers, volunteers at church, anybody really that you can think of that's a caregiver for you. And it's not just family. It can be anybody. So we are going to finish our, our kids' talk today with a prayer. Dear God, Thank you for taking care of us and for being our good shepherd. Thank you that you put other people in our lives to take care of us too. People like parents and grandparents, aunts and uncles, friends, teachers, cousins, ministers, and name whoever else takes care of you now. Thank you for your son Jesus and all the things he teaches us. Amen.
Please join with me as we offer the prayer for today. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to invite Lisa to offer our first reading. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace, at once I fall asleep, for only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Faithful, Faithful defender, defender, do, do not, not let, let our hearts, hearts be troubled. troubled but fill us, us with, with such, such confidence, confidence and joy, joy that, that we may sleep in peace and rise in your light through, through Jesus Christ, Christ our Savior. Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified, and they thought they were seeing a ghost. And Jesus said to them, Why are you frightened, and why does doubt arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when Jesus had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. 
And then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms, must be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and raise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm getting tired. I'm getting tired of preaching from behind a mask. I am tired of being locked down. We are on our third week of our third lockdown, our third set of instructions about what our lockdown might look like. And I don't know about you, but I'm finding the, that's getting more confusing, not less confusing, about what we can and can't do. And we're doing all of this for all the right reasons. We are trying to protect each other. We are trying to slow a disease down that is making people very, very sick. Some folks are not able to overcome this illness, and so we're losing people. People are dying from it. And the messaging that we're getting about what we need to be doing at home, as I said, is getting a little fuzzy. And the first time we locked down, and even the second time we locked down, there was a sense that there was an end in sight. And so, we could be a little bit patient. Who really wants to be out doing too much in the middle of January anyway? And so there were ways and coping mechanisms that we found to deal with all of this. We once again upended our lives and hunkered down and hunkered in, those of us who could. Not everybody is in a position to be able to stay home. Lots of folks work on the front lines. Lots of folks work in jobs that can't be translated to a computer at home or a phone at home. And so we have family and friends who are still in harm's way. And so we're worried and we're tired and we're confused and we're anxious. And it's hard to start a sermon like this without making it sound like we're all whiny because it's getting hard. We've done this a couple of times and there's been no way to fall into a rhythm or a routine because as we're moving into lockdowns and out of lockdowns, as restrictions kind of ex uh, lessen and then tighten again, just as soon as you find a pattern or a rhythm, it's time to shift it into something else. And that's hard, especially as Anglicans, because we like patterns, we like rhythms, we like routines, we like knowing how we're gonna do things. It's kind of what makes us Anglicans. There is a rhythm to our life as a community, there is a life rhythm to our life in worship. And we are on our second year of starting to hit some of those milestones where we're having to do things differently. We have had two Easter's at home. We're looking at another Mother's Day celebration where we're not gonna be able to gather with family and friends. It's gonna be difficult to go pay our respects to family who have gone before at cemeteries coming up. There are lots of things that we have had to do differently. And so as I said, this third lockdown in our third week with our third set of instructions about what we can and can't do, we are tired and feeling a little bit anxious. We're a little bit frustrated that things aren't more clear after this point in time. Somebody should be better at communicating what we do and don't need to do. And we just want things to return to whatever normal feels like to us. Whether it's being able to do something spontaneous without double checking how many people are coming, are we of the same household, and where can we meet so that we can stay six feet apart and out sunlight. Well, how can we do things without having to kind of stop and think, do we really need to make this outing today? Or can we save up a couple of trips and make one stop instead of those spontaneous little trips? When will we be able to sit on someone's porch and have a visit again, not behind a mask or not having to worry about how far apart we are? All those little things that we like to be able to do, we want to be able to do, and that we long to be able to do. So it leaves us feeling a little bit discouraged sometimes leaves us feeling a little bit anxious, wondering when the vaccine rates are maybe gonna pick up a little bit faster so that we can get back to normal. When are our loved ones who are in harm's way, frontline workers, essential workers, people who will work in the medical profession, when are they gonna get what they need to feel safe? 
And so we're anxious and we're fearful and we're a little bit scared and we're a little bit wondering, what do we do next? And once again, we have a passage of scripture that it's like it somehow knew we would need to hear it. Because once again today, we are in the same position as the disciples, maybe for different reasons, but they are gathered in a room alone because they are scared, they are confused, they are not sure what's happening next, and they are a little bit at a loss about how they're supposed to take next steps. Their teacher had been crucified, he has died, he has come back to life, some people have seen him, some people haven't. They're still scared of maybe they'll be next, and so they are huddled together alone in a room, away from the rest of society, away from their family and friends, away from what's normal, away from what feels safe. And in the midst of that, Jesus comes to them. And he doesn't give them grief, and he doesn't start giving them a hard time because they know what they're supposed to be doing. He taught them that. Instead, he offers them his peace. He offers comfort. He understands that they are confused and scared and not sure what to do next. And so they have gathered together in fear and worry together. And so his first response is peace. He knows that's what they need to hear first. Because on top of that, not only are they all of those things, now they're also slightly freaked out because Jesus is standing there. The one that they thought had died has come back to life, and he's standing in the room with them. Are they really seeing what they think they're seeing? You know, it, the scripture tells us they think they're seeing a ghost. They think they're having like some sort of mass hallucination. And it's too good to be true that he's actually sitting there, and so they're scared and confused even more. And so the first thing he offers them is his peace. And he reminds them, like, take a look. It's not a ghost. I have skin and bones and sinew and flesh. And he said, look, here are my hands and my feet. And he shows them. He gives them the proof that they need, the reassurance that they need, that he is exactly who he says he is. And it does say that in their joy, they were still disbelieving because something like this is too wonderful and too miraculous. And so he says, have you got anything to eat? And he eats in front of them. It's a piece of fish. Ghosts don't eat. I'm pretty sure I've watched enough cartoons. Ghosts don't eat. But as I said, he reassures them and reminds them that he is really there with them. He gives them the comfort and the encouragement and the reassurance that they need. That's his first step. He comforts them and he reassures them. And then he reminds them. He opens their minds and reminds them of everything that they already know of everything that they heard him say, of everything that he heard, they heard him speak, of everything that they know to be true, about how much God loves them, about how he had told them what was going to happen, that all that had been pro uh, prophesied needed to be fulfilled. And so he had told them in various different ways and had attempted, whether they'd understood or listened, he had told them what was going to happen and what needed to happen. He reminded them that they, they knew all of that. He reminded them that they knew about all that they had heard him speak, about how much they are loved by God. He reminded them about how much they are cared for God. He reminded them of how much God has fulfilled all the promises. This is what was going to happen because this is what had been foretold. Prophets had been telling, this is what must happen, and this is how the Messiah is going to come into the world, and this is what is going to happen to the Messiah. He reminded them that God kept all the promises that had been made. God fulfilled all the prophecy that had been proclaimed. Reminded them that they knew what was going to happen. Reminded them that they knew how much God loved them. Reminded them of what they already knew. And we need that same reminder too. That we know how much we are loved as people of faith. We are here in our Easter celebration, in our Easter season, hearing again the good news of the, the fulfillment of all the, what all the prophets had proclaimed, the fulfillment of everything that had been promised, the realization that God had been listening and engaging and responding and acting, and that God had done everything that had been promised. The Son of Man must go into the tomb but would be raised again. 
we need to be reminded that we are not alone. That it might feel a little bit lonely, it might feel a little bit disconnected at home, but that we are not alone. Partly because we're all doing the same thing together in our own homes. We're all kind of hunkering down and keeping, um, keeping others safe. We're doing our best to love our neighbors by staying home and being as careful as we can when we go out. We're doing the best that we can to protect ourselves and our loved ones and the households where we live. And that we're all doing that together. Even if we're separated while we're doing it, we are still all doing that together. Just like this morning. It's just Lisa and I in here praying. But that doesn't mean that it's just two of us saying our prayers. There are a number of you who are watching the live stream. There are some of you who will watch this later on. I know a number of you have told me that you, I know there's somebody who likes to do this as they're making Sunday dinner. They listen to prayers, listen to the scripture readings, listen to the message. Some of you have told me it's what you like to do Sunday night as you're getting ready for bed. That we're still saying our prayers together. We're still remembering that we are loved. We are still remembering that we are part of a parish family here at St. John's. We are part of God's family as Christians, as people of faith. And like Jesus came to the disciples this morning in our story, in our gospel reading, we are reminded that we already, we know what we need to know. Sometimes we need to be reminded. Sometimes we need Jesus to stand in the midst of us and kind of give us a little wake-up call. We know that we're not alone in the midst of all of this. We know that God is walking with us and guiding us and caring for us and comforting us and giving us the strength we need to do what we have to to take care of each other and ourselves. God will also give us the wisdom in knowing when it's time to start kind of coming out of that a little bit, when we'll be able to start doing porch visits again and we'll be able to start meeting people across six feet in your backyard or when we'll be able to, to go to a grocery store and not have to be limited in how many people can go in or we'll be able to go in person to see our doctors instead of just by a phone call. We'll know when the time is right because the wisdom and the skill that God has given to the people in charge, to our medical professionals, to those who are making decisions, all of that will be revealed in due time. And until then, we're like the disciples. We hunker it down, we stay home, and we remember. We remember that we have a Savior who knows the ups and downs and the twists and turns and the challenges and the, the struggles that life offers. We also know that we have a Savior who is present with us in the midst of all of that. Because Jesus knows what it's like to be human, he also walks with us in the midst of that. Next Sunday, we'll, we'll celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday. And we'll celebrate all the ways that we are guided and governed and kept care of. And that's why in some ways it was kind of lovely that Catherine's message came this morning because we need that reminder right now. We need to be reminded of how deeply we are loved. We need to be reminded of how that we have someone who is watching over us and walking with us. And we need to be reminded that we kind of know everything we need to. That we are loved, that we aren't alone. We have a companion who walks with us, who has been human and knows the, juggle, the, the, the struggles and the joys of all of that. We know that we aren't alone. We have a, a God who is watching over us and loving us and walking with us and offering the peace that we need, the hope that we need, the comfort that we need. And so when we're having those days when we just want to take off our mask and do whatever we want to do when we want to do it, we need to be reminded that sometimes patience is a virtue. We need to be reminded that we're doing all that we can to take care of and love each other by doing this. And in the midst of that uncertainty, in the midst of that confusion, in the midst of that worries and confusion and anxiety and feeling helplessness or feeling isolated or feeling lonely sometimes, we are reminded that Jesus is there in the midst of it. We maybe don't get to see his hands or his feet or watch him eat a piece of fish, but that we aren't alone and that we are part of something bigger than ourselves, and that we do know what we need to know, where we need to turn to for strength, where we need to turn to for encouragement, where we need to turn to for hope and reassurance. And that that peace that Jesus offered to the disciples, he offers to us. So as you stay at home, remember that there is a companion who is there with you, who is offering peace, who is offering comfort, and who is reminding us that we know everything that we need to know as people of faith, that we are loved, that we are not left alone, and that our encouragement, our hope, and our strength is just waiting for us to recognize it and to pay attention to it and to turn.
Will you please join with me as we make our affirmation of faith? We believe in God whose love is, is the, the source, source of all life and the and desire, desire of our lives. lives. Whose love was given, was given a human face in Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth. Whose love was crucified by the evil that awaits to enslave us all. And whose love, defeating, defeating even death, holds a promise of perfect freedom. Therefore, though we are sometimes fearful and full of doubt, in, in God, God we trust. trust. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we commit ourselves in, in the, the service, service of others, others to seek justice, justice and to live in peace, to care for the earth and to share the commonwealth of God's goodness, to live in the freedom of forgiveness and the power of spirit in, and the power of spirit of love and, and in the company of the faithful wherever found. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Living God, in the midst of Easter joy, we are still filled with questions and wondering. Open our hearts and minds as we encounter the scriptures so that the church embodies repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus to all nations. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. Creating God, like a master artist, you have fashioned the universe out of your love and delight. Heal your creation where it is in need of restoration. Provide all the inhabitants of earth a peaceful and sustainable home. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. God of all the nations hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Many call on you for guidance and strength. Answer their hopes with the peace of Christ and give your loving kindness to national, state, and local leaders of people. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy, your mercy is, is great. great. Healing God, you hear the cries of those in need and answer them in their distress. Grant to those who are sick and suffering your compassion and nurse them back to health and wholeness. Be close to the hearts of the lonely. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Loving parent, you have given us such love that we should be called the children of God. Reveal yourself to us so that we in this community of faith will become more and more like you and our mutual love and bold witness. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy, your mercy is, is great. God of all times and ages, those whom have died in you now see you as you are. We thank you for their lives among us. We remember especially this morning, Pat Lewis. Assure us of the peace you have promised that we may join them in your everlasting life. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great in the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. There have been many gifts offered this week gifts of fellowship and companionship, phone calls. There have been donations made towards our community meal program, and there have been financial gift donations given as well to support and uphold the mission and ministry of this parish. We offer all our prayers into one, and we pray together. Lord God, we offer to you only a portion of what you have given us. All that we have is from your creative hand. All that we can give away, we do through Jesus' love. All our renewal comes from the Holy Spirit's wisdom. Deal graciously with these gifts so that others may have joy. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And now, as our Savior taught us, we gather all our thoughts and prayers into one and we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Go out into the world rejoicing. Meet your creator who awaits you there. Delight in the richness and diversity of the world Christ died to save. Live in the power of the Spirit that renews all things. And the blessing of the Creator God, the Eternal Father, the Risen Son, and the promised Holy Spirit bless you, that you might be a blessing to others today and always. Amen. There aren't too many announcements this morning. Again, we are so grateful for the donations that have come in um, in loving memory of those uh, parishioners and family members who have gone before us. They have once again added such beauty and such joy and are a tangible reminder of the great cloud of witnesses that surround us on our journey in faith and as our journey as a, as a people here at St. John's. And so we are grateful for these donations and this, the beauty that they have added to our Easter celebrations. Um, I'd also like you, in your thoughts and prayers over the next couple of days, is to pray for our school system. They're once again back online. The kids um, have had a, a spring break. Kids and teachers and staff have had a break and are now beginning once again to work and study and learn online. And so we ask that you pray for patience and wisdom to their teachers, to their parents, to the children. This has been a difficult time for them, and some kids have adapted well to learning online and some less so. So as they kind of make that transition once again, please keep parents and teachers, school support staff, and most importantly, our students in your thoughts and prayers as they begin once again learning from home. There was another, yeah, perfect. Just a reminder that even though we have our third set of lockdown orders. Um, Nicole is still in the office on Thursday mornings from 9 until 11. Uh, nope, not until 12. There are some things that she can only do from here, and so that's when she comes in to do them. And so if you need to drop by, give her a quick call ahead of time. We will try to make sure that um, everybody isn't all coming at once and that we can maintain a safe social distance and maintain our numbers. The other important thing for you to be aware of is that uh, some of you may have known we had some water damage. We had a leak in the winter time. Well, not in the winter time, kind of as the, uh, we had an ice dam and we had water where, inside where there wasn't supposed to be water. And so this coming week, those repairs will continue. They have kind of cleaned everything out that was wet and damaged and they are now in the process this week of coming back in and putting everything back to rights with some new drywall and some new lighting and some new flooring and all of those things that need to get done when there's been water where there isn't supposed to be. So just to be aware, so if you see vehicles parked out in front of the church this week, we are not having a party without you. Um, there are uh, tradespeople who will be here to do that work at various points. And just to be conscious of that, if you do need to come in, that there will be folks, um, there will be professional tradesmen kind of coming in and out of the building at various times as they do that work. So just to be aware that those repairs are continuing this week and that there will be others in the building and in the space. Um, we uh, offered a prayer of thanksgiving for all of the blessings and the gifts that we have received this week. And folks have asked us to kind of remind you that there are different ways of doing that. There will be a link if you want to give an e-transfer. There is a link if you want to be able to contribute through the uh, Dawson website. Um, if you want to be able to drop stuff off here, you can call us if you have any questions about any of these different ways of doing that. But this is some of the ministry that is supported. Some of our work with our children and young people at home, the community meal program that still continues. And no, you don't have to pay for me to chop my head off when I'm videoing myself. Thanks for the picture. Uh, but as I said, there is still important work and outreach that is happening. And so those, the, your donations are continuing to help support this work. And there's different ways that you can offer that support. And as I said, you can always give us a call. If you have any questions, give one of the wardens a call, contact Don, our treasurer. Any of those people could help answer any of those questions if you have any concerns around those different ways of donating or supporting this ministry right now.
we continue. As I said, thank you for joining us for worship this morning. I hope you were able to get outside and enjoy some of this beautiful sunshine today. We've got a little bit more of a spring-like day. I will continue to post pictures of how beautiful the gardens look because, as I said, I'm betting when we go outside today, those tulips that were almost open yesterday, I'm betting with a little bit of sunshine that we've had this morning will look gorgeous. So we will continue to share some of that with you. So again, continue to reach out to each other. Continue to reach out to us if you're needing any support, if there's anything that we can do. And so from here, we go in peace through love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.